So hi there, welcome to another episode of Net Support Radio. My name is Mark Anderson. I'm the head of education at Net Support, and on Net Support Radio, we love to bring guests on who are experts in the use of technology, uh, either in the business space or in the education space. And today, I'm really, really uh, delighted to welcome back onto the show uh, my go-to absolute guru uh, when it comes to all things Net Support, and that's Mr. Andy. Uh, welcome, Andy. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, I'm not too bad at all. Thank you. And thank you to you for joining us for this conversation. Today, we're going to be exploring, Andy, the um, security features um, that net, uh, network managers should be sort of considering when it comes to all things technology. Uh, so if it's OK with you, just dive straight into the sort of first question, if that's OK, which uh, asks uh, what sorts of things um, should network managers be looking for to ensure security, uh, particularly with their remote management services? What sort of things should, should they be looking for, Andy? Yeah, so things you want to be doing for remote access is you want to ensure that just your known um, control users are going to be accessing your, your client devices. So you want to have a method of restricting who can connect to those um, devices. You also want to be looking at functionality to ensure that the data then sent between those control and remote users is, is encrypted. Um, and also you want to be looking at functionality such as two-factor authentication to again, just to ensure that the person that's connecting to those machines is the person that should be accessing that. So having that kind of stage level of access is functionality you want to be doing. But also you might have multiple teams looking after your clients. So you want to have mm. different levels of access to your clients. So you want a method of allowing you to say, right, here's my tier one support team. They've got basic level access just to watch. And here's my tier two. They're going to have higher level of, of access. So you want to have functionality like that, as well as the security options. You need to also take into account whether that device you're remote controlling is going to be a unattended device or have a user there so you want to look at functionality that you can enable that maybe prompts the user um if a control person is going to be connecting to that machine but not use mm. that if you're connecting to a an unattended device so there's there's lots of things you want to be looking at in, in certain areas um to ensure that you've got secure access but in the right way as well for your your implementation Thanks, Andy. That's really interesting, which sort of leads me straight on because I'm keen to learn more about NetSupport Manager, which is why I sort of asked that first question, because clearly security is a really big uh, a big issue. And, and when you've got uh, particularly unattended devices, you know, you, you definitely need to make sure that you're uh, the right people are connecting to them, only the right people have access and so forth and so on. So with that in mind, then, Andy, my next question for you is what makes NetSupport Manager so secure? What, what security features are built into NetSupport Manager to offset some of those sort of concerns and worries and things that you shared uh, in response to the first question. Sure. So NetSupport Manager has been used in a number of different Im implementations by, by customers. As I say, it's been used for unattended devices, it's been used for supporting your office workers. So in terms of, you know, one of the items we mentioned was encrypting the, the data. So we've got four different levels of encryption you can enable between your uh, your clients and your, your control from DES encryption 56-bit up to 256 AES encryption. Uh, and we've also got, um, if you're using gateways, um, to support your remote users, we've now got um, SSL um, uh, connections that you can enable in there. So you can secure it with HTTPS um, traffic. So customers can apply their own certificate to the gateway server and require that the, um, the clients and controls will then use that um, to, again, further secure your, your traffic between the, uh, the devices. Um, we've then got functionality. We've mentioned you know, limiting who can access the the remote machines. Again, really important. You want to ensure that just your known control users are connecting to your, your clients. So to do that, you've got different levels of user validation available that you can um, you can enable, such as um, creating a local user and um, password on the, uh, the client machine using our, our local configurator. That's at a kind of basic level to allow you to secure mm -hmm. access. Control user would be prompted for that. But you could, if you wanted to, if you got machines in a domain environment, in an Active Directory domain environment, then you can limit the remote control access to certain group members from that domain as well. So again, control user goes to connect, then we've prompted for username and password. And if they're a member of the group that's allowed to connect, then we permitted a connection to, to that machine. So again, a nice way of um, securing access to those. On top of that, mm. you've got security keys. 
So you can pre-configure all your clients with a, a known security key. You can manage how you roll that out and only controls with a matching security key will then be allowed to, to connect. So you'd only provide that to your known uh, control users. Um, mm. We've then uh, um, also got the ability to, to set gateway operators. So again, if you're using um, uh, gateways to remotely uh, access your machines, you want to limit who can browse those gateways. So you can create operators on the uh, on the gateway to limit who's got access to, to browse those. So that communication between the control and the gateway again, is limited to certain control users. And as part of that, you can also enable um, two-factor authentication as well. So with that two-factor authentication, not only are they gonna have to know their username uh, and password for the operator, they would be prompted um, using either um, duo push um, or using a uh, one-time password um, to then permit the connection to allow them to browse that gateway to further secure access to those remote devices. Um, and then you might have different levels of, of teams. We mentioned the kind of tier one, tier two teams. And um, so you can configure client profiles on the client side. So on the client devices, if the user is a member of this group, it would be provided with this set of permissions to the client, maybe restricting the file transfer functionality, restricting the power management functionality, and just allowing them to remotely watch a, a machine. Whereas if you're connecting as a, a higher level user, um, you might be permitted um, to then have access to the file transfer. So you can use the client profiles to secure different levels of access for your different teams. Um, and then the other important one is, is um, what if somebody's working on that machine and doing something sensitive on that machine and they, they do need remote support, but maybe not quite then and there when the control user attempts to connect to their machine. So you can enable yeah. that user acknowledgement on that machine so that um, that user has a chance to say whether they're ready to accept or reject that connection. And there's multiple kind of choices you can do with that. So if that user is maybe logged off the machine, then it won't require a user acknowledgement. If they're actively on the machine, it will require a user acknowledgement. So there's a, a number of different settings that you can use uh, with that. So yes, there's, there's lots of security built into the Netsport Manager product to help that to be used in lots of different implementations. And that's just, you know, some of the ones or, or the main ones that, that customers will be, be utilizing. Well, that's, that's really helpful, Andy. Thank you. And, and, and it, it really shows the sort of the, the flexibility that the, the ability to um, sort of support users and, uh, and managers across a variety of sort of levels of, of uh, sort of seniority, I guess. Uh, and that, that, that importance of sensitivity, being mindful of different uh, uh, users who, who may be accessing or working on more sensitive items and things as well. Really, really useful to, to know that, Andy. Listen, I want to ask you what our clients sort of say. It's all very well, uh, you know, you and I are big fans of NetSupport, clearly, obviously. Uh, but what sort of feedback do we get from our customers uh, about uh, security uh, um, with inside NetSupport Manager? Have you, have you got, uh, heard any sort of feedback from any of our customers with the conversations that you've been having? So I, I would say one of the, the, the popular or, or, or the most common feedback we get is the flexibility of them being able to choose how they apply those settings and what settings um, they want to apply. So you know, we can supply all the information resources as to what to implement, but there are so many different security configurations and so many different implementations of Netsport Manager. You know, lots of people using it in lots of different ways. Some people using it just to support a handful of users, maybe that are working remotely to people using it to support thousands of devices uh, around an office or around the, the globe at different networks. So being able to apply those settings in different ways so you can choose between applying those via local configurations and managing your, your client configuration mm -hmm. files to do that, to enable you to um, push that out using uh, either Intune or um, pushing out those settings using uh, AD group policy. So just the choice that we provide to lay to set those configurations for your clients and for your controls is one of the big kind of feedbacks we, we get from them. But also, in terms of the use of Net Support Manager, because it is a an on-premise tool, we, we don't host anything for the for the customer of Net Support Manager. That is preferred by a lot of our customers because they can control how the product is implemented and where their data goes as well. So they can host their gateway server and they could host that in the cloud, they could host it on an isolated network, and they are then in control mm -hmm. of where do they want the traffic to go. So it's not going through any third-party servers or anything like that it is all in the control and decision of the customer as to how they want to 
implement net support manager and, and that's um again one of the common feedbacks we get is customers like that they can choose and have that choice as to how they implement and and uh, control that Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much for sharing all of that. And uh, if you're listening and you're liking the sound of all of this with Netsport Manager, then as you can see, scroll across the bottom there. If you do like the sound of Netsport Manager, uh, then please uh, head over to netsupportmanager.com where you can find out more and get in touch. There's a variety of communication methods there, such as through the little chat box, uh, chat window, sorry, uh, that put you right through to our team. Uh, in, in the bottom right-hand corner there. Listen, thank you for giving us some time to talk with me today, Andy. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to welcoming you again back soon on to another episode of Net Support Radio. Thanks a lot, Andy. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Thanks. Bye.